Hello guys, in recent times I've noticed that there's been a flood of YouTube videos that attempt to prove that the Earth is flat. I also find it difficult to find YouTube videos that attempt to prove that the Earth is round. The most common technique that I find flat earthers and round earthers to use to prove their case is perspective, i.e. the vanishing point at the horizon. Optical instruments, in particular cameras, have been used to visually prove that the Earth is flat by showing photographic evidence that no curvature can be found. On the other hand, round earth supporters use the same optical techniques to show that curvature can be found, proving that the earth is round. Now I find that flat earthers and round earth supporters, in their attempts to prove the shape of the earth one way or another, both fail to consider a phenomenon known as refraction. Let me spell that out. That's R-E-F-R-A-C-T-I-O-N, not diffraction, D-I-F-F-R-A-C-T-I-O-N. What is refraction? Refraction is an electromagnetic effect during which the path of light deflects or bends due to a variation in the speed of light between one medium and another. The following figure here illustrates the bending of light from one medium to another. This is not a ladder, this is the path of light. These lines here in the middle represent the wave fronts of the light. And so when light enters a medium of slower speed, the wavelength shortens. In general, the thicker a medium, i.e. the more atoms per unit volume, the higher the index of refraction, and thus the slower the speed of light. Since the atmosphere has weight, and thus pressure, the atmosphere also has density. Therefore, the weight of the atmosphere compresses air close to the ground. This causes the air close to the ground to be denser than the air at higher altitudes. This figure illustrates this. We can see here that the weight of the atmosphere above presses down and compresses air below. At the top here we see we have low pressure which yields low density and at the bottom we have high pressure which yields high density. As a result the air near the ground has a higher index of refraction than the air at higher altitudes. What all this means is that there should be a gradient in the refractive index of the atmosphere. And this means that light propagating through the atmosphere horizontally should deflect or curve towards the ground over large distances. And we can expect this effect to be greater closer to the ground. This figure here illustrates this. We can see that when the atmosphere is almost non-existent, light will propagate in a, in a straight line. We can see here there though at the bottom that when the atmosphere is thick, that is close to the ground, light rays, uh, excuse me, light waves refract towards the ground at a greater um, and a greater intensity, if you will, than high above. Regardless of whether the Earth is flat or round, this effect should be expected and should be taken into account by anyone who wishes to measure the curvature of the Earth by any optical means, i.e. by using cameras, telescopes, or lasers. In other words, through the process of refraction, the atmosphere acts as a lens which distorts or alters our visual perspective. Therefore, how much our perspective is distorted depends on how close we are to the ground, and of course depends on atmospheric conditions such as temperature and humidity. And therefore, to improve the accuracy of perspective, or to improve the accuracy of optical measurements over large distances, one needs to remove himself as much as possible from the atmosphere or take measurements from higher altitudes. 
Since horizontally propagating light deflects towards the ground, it should cause objects at great distances to appear at a higher position than they actually are. This figure here illustrates that. Here we see a star figure. And because the path of light is deflected towards the ground, the position appears higher. In this case, even this shape, or rather the size, the dimensions of the shape appears to be distorted as well. And we'll see this a little bit later. As a result, a flat surface can appear concave over a large distance. Take a look at this figure. We have a flat surface and it appears to be concave. What the human eye sees here is a false image. It's not the real thing, but it appears to be as such. What's actually happening is that the path of light is being bent, again, towards the ground. In a way, it is hyperbolic, excuse me, it is parabolic. It is a parabolic trajectory, in a way. But because the atmosphere is not perfect, it's not a perfect, uh, it's not a perfect parabola. There is a whole lot of distortions along the way. But overall, over large distances, this is the case. A convex surface can also appear flat over a large distance. Here we see a convex surface. And in this particular case, it appears to be flat. Under certain atmospheric conditions, or if the camera or eye is close enough to the ground, a convex surface can appear to be concave over a large distance. Here we see this. Um, I believe a good example of this situation is the surface of a lake. When, when warm air is close to the surface of cold water, then the air very close to the surface of the water would be much cooler than the slightly warmer air up above. Um, this should cause an exaggeration of the refraction. And if we're assuming in this case that the Earth is round, and that the surface of the water is also round with the Earth, we could potentially actually observe a concave surface, as seen in this figure. Since the atmosphere distorts our perception of curvature over large distances, how then can we know whether the Earth is flat or curved if we only use optical instruments, such as cameras and lasers, for a position near to the surface of the Earth. Since atmospheric refraction deflects horizontal light towards the ground, the only assurance we have is that if we observe a false flat surface, then it must mean in actuality that the surface is convex. Now you might ask, is there any proof of this? If this is your question, then let me answer it by taking you on a tour of one of my photo albums. Several years ago, I took a trip to the Philippines across the Pacific Ocean. On my way back to the United States, I decided to whip out my camera and take pictures of the sunset from an altitude around 46,000 feet. At the time I snapped the photos, I was not concerned about flat earth or round earth. I was simply amazed at the beautiful sunset from 46,000 feet. Here, let me show you. This is the first photo I snapped. And we can see at the bottom here, these are clouds. This is not the ocean. These are more clouds. These clouds are actually above these clouds. And I am above these clouds. This picture is a little bit underexposed. 
This is a better picture. This blackness down here, th these are clouds. These are more clouds. Now what we can see here is that the light of the sun is piercing through the clouds from the bottom. And yet we don't see the top surface of these clouds brightly lit. We do not see that. There's the sun. Now this looks strange. It's not a perfectly clear picture. But we can see here that there is a horizon. Now I'm not going to call this the ground horizon just yet. Because as I said, down below are clouds. This is not the ground. These are clouds. Again, remember, I'm flying at approximately 46,000 feet. Now normally airplanes try not to exceed 40,000 feet, but during turbulent conditions some planes will fly higher than 40,000 feet. And now the very interesting thing about this photo is that we could we can definitely tell that the sun is behind the clouds. However, let's keep in mind that this is the top surface of the clouds that we're looking at. And so the sun is so-called positioned below these clouds. Isn't that strange? And considering that I am actually flying above these clouds. These clouds appear to have their own horizon somewhere around here. It's not a well-defined horizon. It might be around here. It's difficult to tell. But the fact is that these clouds have a horizon that is above the sun. In other words, the vanishing point of these clouds is above the sun. Well, the vanishing point of these clouds, it's kind of hard to tell if it's above or below the sun or in the sun or what. We'll come back to that. Oh, here's a much better picture. Now, this is very interesting because we can clearly see that we have more than one horizon. These clouds have a horizon that is higher than these clouds. Now, wait a minute. If the Earth is flat, it must mean that the ground and the clouds all share the same vanishing point. They must all share the same horizon. And in fact, the ground, the ground below these clouds they must have a horizon that rises up to eye level. I want to say that eye level is probably somewhere here. When I aimed my camera at the sun, I remember, I remember that it felt strange that I had to point my camera down a little bit. I was not aiming my camera horizontal looking at the sun. I was pointing it down. To look at the sun by you know a couple of degrees not much but what's very interesting here is that we have a cloud horizon that is below eye level the sun is below eye level eye level is somewhere up here and i know that because i'm flying above these clouds and these clouds have their own horizon somewhere around here. How can that be? That, that cannot agree with a flat Earth, an absolutely flat Earth model. It just, it just does not agree with it. These are not photoshopped. In fact, let's analyze this a little bit because I did mention about refraction. So let's take a look. Let's draw some lines. See if we could see if we could notice anything. 
So I'm just going to attempt to draw a horizon here. I'm going to use a straight line. Let's make it very thin. I'm trying to get this line to match the horizon of that cloud. We want to be as precise as possible. Nope. Let's try to bring it down a little bit. Nope. And the horizon is around here. It's very hard to tell. It's not high precision. But we have a horizon down here. And now I'm going to try to draw another line to represent another horizon, another vanishing point. It looks like it could be up here somewhere. It's hard to tell. Okay. So we see that we have a horizon here and we have another horizon somewhere around here. It might be slightly lower, slightly higher. It's a little hard to tell at this point. Now what I really want to show you is refraction. Is there evidence that refraction is taking place? I want to say yes. Now, I'm going to try to follow the circular shape of the of the clouds, or I'm sorry, of the sun. I want to try to follow the circular shape of the sun. Not sure what happened there. It's no big deal. All right. So when we're looking down below this horizon, we see the shape of the sun kind of circular. That seems to match. But from a slightly above, sorry, slightly, yeah, from above that horizon, there appears to be another curvature of the sun. Now this is this is difficult. Somewhere around right there. I don't think that's perfectly aligned, but It's, it's close enough. So what we see here is that there appears to be two positions of the sun. Now let's keep in mind that this horizon is the top of the clouds. It's the top of these clouds. If I were to estimate the bottom of the clouds, I want to say it's... Oh, what is this? I want to say that it's somewhere around here. I really cannot tell how thick or thin these cloud layers are. But for now, let's just say it's here. 
And so this blue line represents the separation between the upper atmosphere layer and the lower atmosphere layer. Of course, then we also have another separation up here. Another thin cloud layer up here. Kind of reminds me of an onion having different layers. Now, considering refraction. If the Earth was round, I'm going to exaggerate a miniature Earth here. A miniature round Earth. Right about there. And let's say that the ground is, I don't know where the ground might be. Let's say the ground is here. Just for argument's sake. Granted here, my earth is not a sphere. It's not a sphere. It's more like an oval. But that doesn't matter in this case because all we're analyzing is refraction. Now let's set up a position of our eye. Let's say that I am right here. This is me, you know, on an airplane. And so this distance here this is my 46,000 feet, all right? So let me draw a line. That right there is 46, oh, that is so tiny. Forty six thousand feet. That's my altitude at this point. And so now I'm looking down at this horizon towards the sun. And what I see here, looking at the bottom. This is what I think I'm seeing. This is, this is what I observe. But due to refraction, the actual position, or sorry, the actual path of light, let's make this yellow, is more like that and so I see light our light is coming from the bottom of the Sun and it refracts through the atmosphere I think it's more accurate to put it this way And we see that light actually refracts through here. Oh, that's not good. Anyways, you get the idea. So this is the actual path of light in yellow. And this red line is the false path of light. This is what I think I'm looking at, and this is where the sun actually is. This is where the sun appears to be, but this is where it actually is in this case.
And so as we can see here, this layer of atmosphere down below here let's make this nice and thick this atmosphere down here is thick it's thicker than the atmosphere up here And there's sort of a, there's a horizon to that. So you can see the refraction. There is evidence here that the image of the sun is refracted in such a way that it distorts its position and its shape. And I'm pretty sure the sun is actually much lower than what it appears. But this is all I can go off of. In order to get a more accurate um, photograph of the position of the sun, I'd have to fly much higher. Actually, in this case, I am flying higher than this. But no, I'm not going to save this. Now, let's look at this if the Earth was flat. See if I can make any sense of it if the Earth is flat. So again, we have the horizon. The cloud horizon here. And it intersects the sun. We have another cloud horizon here. Okay, you get the idea. Now, if the Earth was flat, then I don't understand how we can have these multiple horizons. Furthermore, I don't understand how this cloud layer would be intersecting directly through the sun. It's like what we're saying here, if the, earth is, if the earth is flat, we have the surface of the earth, and then we have a nice, beautiful sun, and this sun moves around, goes around in circles, above the earth and then we have some clouds here let's make this white so then we have some that's not white here's white and then we have some clouds here setting on top of this layer and i don't know about you but that doesn't make any sense to me and what's even stranger is that there's another cloud layer with some more clouds, a thinner layer sitting on top of that. I don't understand if that's the sun and this is flat Earth. I'm somewhere up here. There's my altitude at forty six thousand feet. Tell me, someone tell me if that makes sense. It doesn't make any sense to me. I should be able to fly over the sun at some point. Anyways. The 
Let's take a look at some more pictures. This is one of my favorite. Because here we actually see multiple horizons. Let me outline them for you. I am pretty sure that down here is the ground. So that is the horizon. And it's supposed to raise up to eye level. And it doesn't make sense to me that this is the top surface of these clouds. And I am flying above it. If I am flying above those clouds, then this ground horizon should rise up higher. And we could actually see a cloud horizon there, a cloud horizon there, a cloud horizon somewhere up here. And quite possibly, eye level is up here. And this is 46,000 feet. Down here is ground horizon. So that means that if I look at this horizon and I look directly down, 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 down until I'm looking directly down and I keep turning my head and until I'm looking at the horizon on the opposite side, basically directly behind me, that should be 180 degrees. 180 degrees. This should be 180 degrees from this point down below all the way until directly behind me from this point of view. But down here, this would be less than 180 degrees. And so what I'm saying here is that if here's the Earth, I'm going to exaggerate it a little bit. Oh. What I'm trying to show you here, this is my position right here, engine, sorry, 46,000 feet. Then this to here, all right, and compare that with Something like this. This is eye level. And so here to here, 
is 180 degrees. But here to here is less than 180 degrees. And we have the sun. like this now this is not to scale i'm kind of exaggerating the scale here but you get the idea that looking up here at eye level is above the sun this is forty-six thousand feet from the surface i'm highly exaggerating the curvature and so either the sun is intersecting the clouds, hovering above the earth, or the sun is much further out, that's not a good position of the sun, Something like that. Should actually be here. Here, here's the here's the sun. Well, in this case, the sun is burning the ground. So that. There. X that out. It's not correct. So here's what's going on. The sun is burning the ground. It's touching the ground. I don't I just don't see how this can possibly exist with a flat earth. It makes no sense to me. Because this is eye level. That is below eye level. This is the ground. For this to be possible, the sun would actually have to be out here somewhere. So my perspective is supposed to be, supposed to be looking out this way. So the sun should be out, should be a big sun out far out in the distance. That makes better sense to me. And here's another picture that's interesting. It's a little out of focus. But what we can see here is that this is the ground horizon. This is the sun. And remember those cloud layers? We have the bottom side of the clouds. And we have the top of the clouds. Not around here. A little out of focus. So these are the top of the clouds, and these are the bottom of the clouds. And what this looks like is the following. This is what we have. We have clouds here. And the sun is bright enough to pierce through this cloud layer. Now these clouds extend out below me as well. But they're not so dense that it completely blocks out the sunlight. That's the ground horizon. That's the horizon that's supposed to rise up to eye level.
Now, when I looked at this picture, that is, when I took this photo, I saw that these clouds were still out here in the distance. See these clouds right here? And I looked at the monitor on the airplane, which told me my altitude. And we were still at 46,000 feet. We've never descended lower. And this is still the top surface of another cloud layer. And that cloud layer has its horizon somewhere up here. When I took this picture, I had to point my camera down by a small angle, but I still had to point it down. And eye level is somewhere up here, more or less, at 46,000 feet. And down there, ground. And over here, we have the sun. This is difficult to draw. Something like that. And so, most of the sun down here is hidden below the horizon or below the clouds. But the teeny tiny bit of peaking, the tiny little peak, the very top of the sun barely shines through. And again, this spot appears bigger than it really is because of focus reasons, because of focus, per, um, you know, for focus problems. It was hard to focus in on the sun. But there's no way possible that you would see this and that with the flat earth. It's just not possible. Aha. This is a very interesting one. You can clearly see that the sun is actually setting below the horizon. Let me trace out the horizon for you. The ground horizon is somewhere here. We have the bottom of the clouds here. You can tell by the, the bright and dark differences. The bottom of the clouds are somewhere here, and the top of the clouds are there. And that's the horizon. And again, I'm still at 46,000 feet, and voila! These clouds, this is the surface of these clouds. Their horizon is somewhere up there. Which means that eye level is somewhere up here, maybe higher, maybe lower, but that's 46,000 feet at the horizon. And we can clearly see here that the sun, at least from my perspective, is setting below the horizon.
Look at that. There's the sun. Below the horizon. There is no possible way that that is possible at all. It's just, it cannot exist this way with a flat earth. There's no way. And look, it's even further down. Look at that. Here's the sun. Here's the ground horizon. This is supposed to raise up to eye level. Look at that. What is this? Look at that. This is the surface that I am flying above. Its horizon is somewhere up here. Maybe a little lower. And eye level is somewhere up here. You can clearly see that the not only does the ground horizon not raise up to eye level, but the sun actually sets below the horizon. This is not possible with flat earth. It's just, there's no way that it's possible. I think this is the last I see of the sun, right here. You can still kind of see the shape of the sun. Look at that. Make this thinner. It's hard to tell the exact size, but I can still estimate the shape more or less like that. And then we have the ground horizon somewhere there. top of the clouds here. Another thing to note look at that. Trying to match up this line as clean as possible to the horizon. What is up with that? Look at this. The horizon is not perfectly flat. At least this horizon, this cloud horizon, is not flat. Isn't that interesting? There's some curvature that can be seen in the horizon itself. There's no way, it's not possible for this to be um, a flat earth. It's just not possible for this to exist with a flat earth. Look at those clouds. Here they are again. They're still, they appear to be flying high. But even at this point, I looked at the monitor, and guess what? 
I'm still flying at 46,000 feet. And these clouds were still moving. The clouds are still, they weren't moving in this direction going this way. No. They were moving upward. As we continue to fly, the vanishing point of these clouds were still high above. I want to say somewhere around here. And so eye level was somewhere around here, maybe higher, maybe lower. So we have it up here is 46,000 feet. And down here we have ground horizon, not at high level. Here we have the sun. All right, folks, I guess that's it. I'm going to just show you some, uh, some more photos. Maybe you can enjoy them. But this concludes my argument for or against flat earth or curved earth. Let me know in your uh, in the comments below what you think. Maybe you enjoyed my photos. Let me know if you like my photos. Here are the bottom clouds again. Zooming in. So this is actually how bright it still was at the time. but the camera adjusted for the um, intense light from the sun. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, hey, look at this. Wow. What do you know? Look at that. We have a horizon here. We have another horizon here. Very faintly can tell that there's another horizon. There are so many horizons. Imagine that. Isn't that beautiful? Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Look. One horizon, two horizon, three horizon. And keep in mind, eye level is still somewhere up here. One horizon, two horizon. Three horizon. Isn't that beautiful? Look at that. That is beautiful.
Wow. This is, to me, this is evidence that the Earth is round. Because we have multiple horizons. And these horizons don't raise up to eye level. They just don't. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Again. I'm flying higher than those clouds. Those are the same layer of clouds that we saw on the on the left side before. Look at that. You can almost see the ground here. And then another, and then you can see the clouds, and then another layer of clouds. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Isn't the earth beautiful? Look at that. Oh, look at that. What? Going out of focus. This is the sunrise. It has not been. It has not even been 12 hours. And I am beginning to see the sunrise. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, I think that's it. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed my photo album. Now let me know what you think. Is the earth flat or is it round?